Hi and welcome to RC Kicks. On today's show, well, we're going to be checking out this, the 124008. So uh, the naming hasn't got any better. Now, I am a massive fan of the old one. So much so, I still have it and I drive it, then I throw it on the shelf and then I get it out now and again and I'll blast it around. And it was good enough for me. I didn't bash the living daylights out of it and it just kept going. And I did actually like the look of this. Now, I'm not a cab forward kind of guy, but I think they kind of pulled it off and I do like these colors. What will be interesting is to see, have things moved on? So let's unbox it, take a look at it and see, did they actually make any more effort or are they just regurgitating the same old stuff over and over again? Now they did do a few other versions that I kind of just didn't get into at all. And there was a few that were slightly better and a few that were actually worse. Now I was really interested in the one tenth version, which turned out to be a bit naff. So let's see, have they actually nailed this one? Or should you just stick with the old one because it was good enough? Let's find out. So looking at the box, they seem to have improved the actual print. It just looks a bit more professional now. We've got more of what you'd expect on the back with warnings and stuff like that. So yes, they seem to have improved it. One thing I do like is now you actually lift the box open and you still get kind of the actual branding. Whereas if you look at the previous one, which to be, to be fair, the actual box wasn't that bad, but because it was a lift off, it kind of looked a bit cheaper being that the whole back is just plain but it's just the box but it is part of the experience of does it feel like you got value for money so what you get in the box you get everything to get you up and going kicking off with the transmitter now this has changed quite a lot but doesn't it look really familiar I uh, wonder where they got the styling from <laughs> look it's almost identical uh, yeah so it's fine, no issues at all with the transmitter. It's one thing I really liked, it's got a thumb controller on it. Now that's the first time I've seen a thumb controller, which really helps when you're trying to film, for me personally. The grip is, has a soft rubber feel to it, which I really like. So definitely gonna give them extra points for that. This whole top piece is totally pointless, really. Now it does have a way that you can fit your phone so it's definitely a step up batteries go in the bottom but a lot of this is just nothing in it so there is zero in here to <laughs> warrant it whereas you look at the more expensive ones there's obviously a reason they're like that that's a battery in the bottom and the top is obviously for the screen but hey this is a brilliant transmitter one of my favorites so in the hand it's still fine and it is a foam which is good. I mean, they've put like a little brake disc in it. So they've made a little bit of an effort and the colors, yeah, fine. So, okay, it's good enough. Now, from a styling point of view, I personally prefer the old one. Wheelbase is the same. Going from the rear spoiler, rear spoiler is exactly the same cutout, same mounting brackets. One thing that's changed a lot between these two is the amount of alloy versus the amount of plastic. So the original one, sorry, it's absolutely filthy had metal uprights. Now I didn't mind them, I thought they looked okay, but they did tend to bend, but then it was really easy to bend them back. The new one has got a completely different chassis. They've now moved to a plastic chassis, honeycomb, much stronger. This is a very strong design with the extra lip that goes all the way around. So it does have a feel of more moving forward, moving away from the style that we used to get with the metal chassis to more that you see from bigger manufacturers now. It does look very familiar, but it works. The extra little side pods I like because the actual body clips into it to protect it a little bit more. So this is definitely gonna be a lot stronger. One thing that's a bit of a shame is the shocks. Nothing's really changed from the shocks. So even though the whole kind of chassis has progressed a little bit and looks more like you see from higher end manufacturers, they're still a bit cheesy and a bit chintzy. Now the actual shocks don't perform too badly. The version that I've got here does seem a little bit more boingy. It needs slightly heavier oil, I think, but you can obviously dial that in yourself. The ground clearance is much higher. <laughs> So it definitely has that tabletop feel, but that's nothing you can't dial out yourself. Obviously they are adjustable shocks. 
The new version is obviously brushless. Specs for the electronics, 35 amp ESC, takes a 3S LiPo, 1300 milliamp, and there's a 2000 milliamp option available. Now you're looking at about 98 pound. I had a look this morning for this one. Does apparently 60 kilometers an hour with a 100 meter range. The motor is a 3500. Now the arms themselves don't seem to have changed at all. No, they're exactly the same. And the geometry of the two cars looks to be identical so yes it does feel like they've progressed a little bit with it you get metal on the rear and metal on the front now which is good because it's holding the pins in place it's going to make them stronger so it does feel a bit more like it's moved forward a little bit now the battery that comes with it is this kind of half proprietary <laughs> battery this 3s this is the 2000 milliamp version from what i can read on here but you should get a 1300 so i'm not sure if they've now made it that you just get the 2000 or whether i've got the, the upgraded battery included i have to say this is where i think they've gone backwards versus the older design the older design you could basically put in anything you wanted and because of this extra space you could take this out and change it around and drill holes and mount a velcro strap and put pretty much anything you wanted it in the new one you're much more limited there's pros and cons to it now the advantage to it is very easy to fit the battery you've got this kind of flap that goes over the top and then you take the battery and because the dean's connector is like set into the actual buggy you put your battery in and then you just push it in close it and then turn it so that actually works brilliantly but super limited so if you're going to get one of these i would highly recommend getting two batteries because you're going to have an issue now from what i can see the connector is not the problem you can actually unscrew this and take out the dean's connector and then you've got it free, but you're gonna be super limited because you've got this plastic strap. There's no Velcro strap. Now I have got a few other batteries from other cars that I've had and they do work. So this is a 3S battery. That This is a thousand milliamp, I think this one is, or just over 1,050. This actually fits in it. And it, so I can use that. I need to put something here, otherwise I could see it flying out. It's quite stiff though. So that works. Also, I picked, I've got a couple of older 2S ones and these fit as well. So I could put a 2S in it. You'd, I put a bit of foam in there, I think. So as I've got quite a few 3S batteries that are like this style, it's fine. But if you're setting out, you definitely want to be bu budgeting an extra battery and you might as well get the bigger battery that's going to last you a bit longer one thing i really liked on some of the early batteries is you had this feature where you could put your finger on it hold it down and it would tell you how full it was that i really liked and then they scrapped it and after these ones they never did them again so that's a shame because it's really handy when you're storing storing these batteries to go back and be able to check them on these ones well how do you check this how do you know what charges it's at? You have to have the adapter to come out of this. So if you want to actually check this, you can't use things like this because it's a pain. You have to make a cable that comes from that to go to that. So that was a really nice thing that it's a shame that they scrapped it. The car itself is about hundred pound. The batteries are about 24 to 25 pounds. So you're looking at 25% extra on top, but it's definitely worth getting. Obviously you get a USB charger that plugs in that yeah charging that on a normal charger is going to be you need to get the cable for it so uh, it, it kind of helps so if you're going to buy this for someone who's getting into rc then they'll they'll be happy to use this battery and especially if you buy two of them it's fine it's just if you've got batteries already it's a bit frustrating because you might have a, a two or three other 3S batteries that won't work in this car. And then you're buying another one of these batteries when you had them. The receiver still sits up here on the top. Then you've got a little fan on your little ESC. EC, EC, so it's all kind of standard stuff. The motor is a smaller than the some of the other versions. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see how it handles. Definitely got thicker drive shafts. Now it's got dog bones at the rear and it's got uh, universals at the front, which is good for the steering. 
all in all, reasonably happy with it when you're looking at £100. The, the, obviously, we'll have to test it and see how it drives. The tyres are basically the same as what we've seen previously. They're okay. No issues at all. I kind of like the disc's design. So, that's okay. Plastic uprights. Yeah, totally fine with that. So, if I was looking at between the two, I think they have improved things quite a lot, especially around the chassis. Like to see some upgrades from the shocks now, really. Right, I think that pretty much covers everything. So let's take it out and see how it drives. We'll also take out the old one and see how it performs against that. Now, one thing that shocked me straight from the beginning is how true it runs. This is flat out and I had no spinning, no uh, sliding off, no rotation. It just tracked totally straight. And 36 miles an hour was the top speed that I could get. And I was reasonably happy with that, but it did feel a little bit faster. Now, let's see how it handles the rough stuff. Now, this is the perfect kind of surface to run a 112 buggy on small little gravel now one thing that surprised me quite a lot was having the body clip into the sides kept a lot of the junk out of the car so the chassis didn't fill up with lots of rocks and rubble <laughs> now these are great fun to drive and you can really throw the tail out on them Right, we're gonna do a distance test now across the field. On the box, it says it's 100 meters. So that's roughly towards the other end of this field. So let's see how we get on. And I can pretty much go all the way to the other side of the field without losing any signal at all. Super happy with that. I'm pretty sure that's a lot better than the old one, as the old one used to glitch out a lot shorter distance. Now, being at how rough this field is, I was really surprised that this little 112 buggy could actually handle it. Right, let's see how we get on with the older version. Now, one thing that you can really tell in this is how well it slides, and it feels great fun to get all four wheels sliding under power. And I think that's the trait that I really like the most in this old buggy. Again, planted, straight as an arrow, no drama going flat out. Obviously, it doesn't feel as fast, so I'm sure it's a good few mile an hour slower than the new one, but the actual way that those tires hook up and you drift all four wheels is just great fun. Right, let's see how fast it was. And its top speed was 30 miles an hour, so a good six mile an hour less. Right, back to the rough stuff. Now the tires on this are obviously more for tarmac, but it handles really well. Again, it still has that drifting feel about it. Now this is obviously a lot lower as well than the new one. It really enjoys this kind of terrain. And you can just zoom around like a loony and have loads of fun. And I think that's the essence of what these buggies are for, is just sliding the back out. Now we're gonna do a range test again in a minute to see how we get on with the old transmitter. Now I'm not expecting it to be anywhere near as close to the new one. I was still quite surprised how it handles this rough field. Now the shocks are exactly the same as what's on the new one, so they haven't upgraded them at all, but this is sitting a lot lower. Right, let's see how far we can go before I lose connection. We're at about 60 to 70 meters and I start having glitching problems. Yeah, now I'm worried I don't have to walk all the way over there and get it. So I hold the transmitter up a little bit higher to then turn it around and start bringing it back. So definitely not as good as the new transmitter. So there you go. So after my quick drive, what did I think? Well, I've kind of changed my mind a little bit. So let's go through it. I've made a list of the pros and cons versus the old one and the new one. 
So now we'll start with the new one, the chassis. Yes, the chassis is definitely a big step forward. I think it's going to be a lot stronger, especially if you love bashing. I think having that honeycomb and the sides, it's just more what we're used to from other manufacturers that uh, produce very strong bashy kind of cars. So I think they've taken a lot of inspiration from that. So on that front, I think it's a big step forward versus what they were producing before. The brushless system and the whole electronics in this is a big step up from the brushed version. I was surprised just how much heat I was getting from the older one. When I was taking the batteries out of it, it was super cooking. So obviously it's wasting loads of electricity in heat and it kind of dawned on me that if you was to give the uh, older one to a youngster it can get so hot that you could end up kind of burning yourself a little bit and I was trying to turn it off and I was reaching in with my finger and I was touching all kinds of hot things to try and turn it off because the ESC combo that's in the old one the little button is tiny and it's really close to the heat sink so that's not actually that great whereas the power and the uh, ESC on the new ones it, it can easily cope and give you more power without more heat so it felt cooler all round as well as it's got a separate uh, power switch on the new one which is much more sort of modern versus the kind of ones we saw in the older ones speed well we're running 2s and 3s as the old version only ran on 2s but it was 30 on the 2s and 36 on the modern one so the only time you really noticed that was when i was doing speed runs you notice the extra six mile an hour drive on the dirt and messing about you don't really notice it and I never had an issue with the speed of the old one I always thought it was good enough and it was fun to drive it never felt slow but now you've got even more power but it's still manageable it's not totally crazy so I actually think they got that right 36 is about where you want to be maximum really on a buggy of this scale don't think this is not one tenth this is one twelfth so you otherwise you start to lose too much control so I think they've got it bang on. Another one that was a really big step forward when we did the range test, the new transmitter and receiver could well outpace the old one. When I was on that field, the field was well over 100 meters long and we could easily drive wherever we wanted without me losing any kind of signal. Whereas the old one cut out at about 75, 80 meters. The new transmitter is another step up from the old one as well as in the, the quality. The only thing I can say that is a bit of a shame about it is that they use AAA batteries in the bottom of it instead of AA batteries and personally AA batteries they in transmitters they just last longer and they're they're easier there's more of them around so it can be a bit of a faff trying to find triple A's when you use a lot of AA batteries but I'm splitting hairs overall the transmitter is definitely a step up from the old design that we had. Now let's go to the old one. What was things that were actually better with the old one? Well, the big one for me personally is looks. The old one is much better looking than the new one. I can't say I'm overly sold on how it looks. Now I can tell why they did it because obviously they want to sell a lot of these in America. And the red, white, and blue is a very distinctive color for America with the flag and everything. So I can see a lot of people in America liking this kind of livery. I've never been a cab forward kind a person so mixture of the colors I don't personally like and the actual body I don't really like I do like how that you can slot them in the side one thing I did notice which is kind of strange if you look at the box this plastic bit across the bottom had gaps in it so you could see the body underneath in on the box they did away with that and just done a single bit of plastic so that was something I just noticed so that really grabs the body and holds it tight and makes it a little bit like it's going to last a little bit longer. Another one that's steering. I actually preferred the steering on the old one to the new one. The new one kind of got overwhelmed as you've got like leaning into a corner. There's a lot more <sighs> slop. Not, well, not necessarily say slop, but it, it just felt like if you're pushing into a corner, it would uh, turn the steering for you and it would get overwhelmed by the extra power and, and as you're driving into corners and stuff so that's something i definitely want to look at that definitely feels much softer than that does 
and this did feel stronger. So it would hold its line instead of like, as you're going around the corner, this wheel would constantly keep buckling and you'd turn sharper than you wanted to because you couldn't hold it in that position. Another thing that I <laughs> goes against what I just said a minute ago was uh, the vintage, uh, the vintage one, the older one had a lovely slide. You could underpower, you could actually get the buggy to slide and it was very controllable. And I think that's because it had a brushed motor in it. So with these wheels and tires, you got nice drifts that were very controllable. And with the brushless, and now this is not censored, you don't get that. It's a bit too punchy. You kind of oversteer. You can't glide it as well. But obviously that's because it's brushed, but then that goes against the whole heat and the speed. And so it's just something I really liked about the old buggy, the way that it would slide. Now I did kind of think, oh, I wonder if it's just to do with the tires. So I took the tires off the old one, put them on the new one just to try it and see, because I do like the feel of these old tires. They just work better on the loose gravel and on the tarmac. And it did improve the handling for me but it didn't have that smooth drifting. It was harder to get it to slide under power where the old one, and that was fun. That was always really a thing that I loved about the old one is it was fun to do that. The next one was the battery. I think what they've done with the batteries and I can understand why they did it, but it, for me, it would be a pain. I prefer the, I can select whatever battery I want. And a big part of that is knowing how much juice you've got in your battery. Now I've just taken this out and I've driven it and I finished driving it, but I don't know how much uh, energy is left in the battery. How do I check that? I can't just get the balance lead to plug it in. I'll have to dig out a extension cable for it, plug it in and then plug that in. So that is a real faff. So I don't know how they kind of think you're supposed to figure out whether you put your car away with a completely dead LiPo battery. Is that good for anyone? I really don't like that. I, that's something I, I don't think is great. And obviously you can't tell because the battery doesn't have a way of telling you either. So that worries me a little bit about the new one. Whereas the old one, you could just use any old battery and then you could just plug the balance lead in and it'll tell you what kind of voltage you were getting. Another thing I noticed when I took the wheels off is the alloy hexes that you got on the old one have gone in the new one. But I can kind of understand that trying to keep the price point right, that they've taken some things away that haven't actually added that much value and replaced them. Like obviously they've spent more on the ESC and motor combo that's in this versus the old one. So I don't really mind that. I've never, can't say that I had an issue with plastic hexes in these. So it's one of those things I think they put it in to tick it off and then they realized that they could lose it as it wasn't really an issue. But all in all, I have the two, which one would I buy? Well, definitely the new one. Even though I don't like the look necessarily, it is a better buggy all round. But if you have one of the old ones, would I upgrade to the new ones? Probably not, no. What I would end up doing is putting more modern electronics in the old one and just being happy with that. And I think that pretty much covers it. Anyway, thanks very much. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.